Welcome all, and thank you for joining today's AWRI webinar. My name is Michael Downey. Uh, before we jump into today's discussion around irrigation budgeting, a couple of very quick reminders for anyone new to AWRI webinars. If you'd like to provide a comment or to ask a question, please open the Q&A section of the webinar, type in your question and click to send it through. We will be running a dedicated Q&A at the end of today's presentation, but please feel free to send through your questions at any stage. Uh, also, just a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available to view later this afternoon from the AWRI's YouTube channel. Now, for those of you that have just joined, welcome. Today's webinar takes a look at a new irrigation budgeting tool. And it's fantastic to have Dr. Paul Petrie from the South Australian Research and Development Institute with us to shed some insights around the capabilities of this tool. Paul is the Principal Scientist for Viticulture and Manager of the Irrigated Crops at SADI and is involved in a number of projects associated with better managing dry winters and understanding vintage compression. Paul has previously worked in research and extension at the AWRI and as the National Viticulturist at Treasury Wine Estates. Paul, it's great to have your expertise on hand and if you're ready, I'll hand over to you to make a start. Thank you very much, Michael. We'll get to the right slide to begin with. Um, so just first up, uh, to acknowledge the support of my colleague uh, based at the Saudi Loxton Research Station, uh, Mr. Mark Skews, who was very uh, integral to the um, to the refinement of this irrigation budgeting tool. It's based, it's based on some, some work that he and some of his colleagues in uh, Rural Solutions South Australia did um, eight or 10 years ago. So, Vineyard water balance. Uh, this isn't a very good picture of a grapevine, but it did come with all these nice annotations that are much easier for me to use. So we're interested in, in, in water balance. What is water balance? It's the, um, the sum of the rainfall and the irrigation, uh, less the runoff, the drainage, and the evaporation from the soil surface, whoops, and the transpiration from the, the vine leaves or the plant leaves. Um, so how are we interested in this? How does this relate to, to water balance or irrigation scheduling? Uh, our irrigation budget is based on a, a calculation or an estimation of the, the transpiration and the evaporation component. Um, so how much water the, the vineyard uses. Um, so we can see then if it is matched by the rainfall and if it isn't, how much extra irrigation we might have to, have to add. Um, if we apply or we have um, extra rainfall or we have to or we apply more irrigation then, then we will lose some of that water also through through runoff and drainage and we, we do look to take in, that into account as part of our um, irrigation budget. Okay so how do we do this? Um, we start off by um, modeling the, the vineyard evaporation and transpiration. We um, have a, a, a nice word for this, evapotranspiration or summarized to, to ETO. Um, how do we do it? We have a big long equation right in the middle of there. I'm not expecting you to remember it. I certainly do not. Um, it hides or it doesn't even hide in the background of the, of the spreadsheet. It's, it's, it's all done with the numbers that we're using. What drives evaporation and transpiration or evapotranspiration? It's the, the solar radiation, the amount of sun, the air temperature, the relative humidity, so the, um, the, the moisture demand from the atmosphere and the, the wind speed. Uh, we're able to, I suppose, measure this or we're able to model it. Um, we also forecast it and um, over on the right here is a, a map put together by the Bureau of Meteorology looking um, at the potential evaporate transpiration um, across Australia for, for December. So that's a, the amount of water that would be um, used by, by, by plants. I'll talk a little more detail about how that's done in a second, next slide, but actually across the continent. Um, note that I say potential, so this is the unconstrained use. So that basically if there's, um, it means that the, the, the plants aren't exposed or the vines aren't exposed to any water stress. So Evapotranspiration, what's it calculated for? It's a, um, a hypothetical, um, well, that's a grass, water grass paddock. Um, that's 12 cent, where the grass is 12 centimetres high. 
um, and it's always well watered. Um, it, so I suppose as, a, as another passing comment, I'm always surprised at how consistent these evapotranspiration values are, are between seasons. And that's one of the strengths of these, the, um, using the system that we can look forward for the season and we can say that we, you know, we, we have a, a reasonably good idea what the evapotranspiration is likely to be. It's certainly a lot more consistent than the, the other main parameter that, that um, drives our, our water budget, which is the, the rainfall. Um, so if we contrast this uh, 12 centimetre high grass field to um, a vineyard, um, our vineyards generally use quite a bit less water. Why do they use less water? Because uh, dormant during winter, there's no, there's no leaves there, so they use relatively little water then. Um, as the canopy develops during spring, they use a little bit more, but even when it's at full canopy, there's still those, those gaps between the, the rows where there's, where there's no leaves. And um, while the soil is exposed, it doesn't um, evaporate or lose water at any thing like the rate of the, the canopy. Um, vineyards, unlike our um, hypothetical grass, um, also experience water stress. And um, when the, the vines are stressed, they generally shut their stomata, and that means they're also using uh, less water. So how do we convert that um, evapotranspiration value to something that's more sort of sensible for our, our vineyard? Uh, we use something, uh, an, another, another factor we call a crop coefficient. Um, the crop coefficient is basically a, a conversion to take us from the evapotranspiration to what the vineyard actually uses. Uh, um, it's based on, or I suppose for a well-watered canopy, this, the, or well watered vineyard, the size of the canopy is very closely related to the amount of water that's used. So if we look over on the, the graph over on the on my right hand side here, um, the percent shaded area, which is basically the size of the shadow that the, the, the canopy casts um, as a measure of how big the canopy is, is, is very close related to the amount of water that the, the, the grapevines or the vineyard use. So if you have a um, a, a vineyard that has larger vines with a larger canopy, they're going to use a lot more water than um, a vineyard with, with smaller vines or a, a more sparse canopy. Sort of continuing that, we say the, the large canopy uses more water. That means the larger canopy also has the, the higher crop coefficient. So it's effectively that's the same graph, but instead of having water use, I now just have crop co coefficient on, on there. Um, if we look at this another way, um, we can look across the the season here, and what would we expect that our, or what would that crop coefficient look like as the as the season progresses? Um, for a well watered canopy in the blue line, um, we get up, you know, during the during the height of the season when the canopy is full, that it's about seventy percent or 07 of the the evapotranspiration. But if we have a um, a vineyard which is experiencing some water stress or has some um, as a small canopy, um, we would have uh, quite a lot less water used. Now, trying to, um, I suppose, match those to, to production systems that we uh, that we see or that we we use in Australia, the 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 full system here would match somewhere um, along the the Murray River, you know, a, um, a riverland, a sunraysia. Um, uh, MIA type, type region where we're targeting um, larger yields. We generally have larger canopies and we have a larger, a larger water requirement. Uh, uh, the red line there would target some of the other regions, somewhere, um, you know, a, a Barossa, a Central Victoria, or a Coonawarra, where the canopies are often smaller and that the, um, the target yields are quite a lot less. Note that if you were in, I don't know, a region such as somewhere like, like Pathway and you were targeting a, a higher yield and you were growing a, you know, a large canopy in order to, to do that, you, your, your system might be better described as a, as a fill irrigation system. And there's options in the, uh, the irrigation budgeting tool to allow you to, to select for which system you want. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later in the talk. So just to, to recap, we start with the, the evapotranspiration, which is the, um, the, the estimate of, of how much water the, the vineyard system will, oh, sorry, that the grass sward will use. We then use the crop factor to, um, to convert that into what a, a, a vineyard is likely to need. Um, we subtract 
the rainfall, which is the amount of water we receive during the season. So if we have that, obviously we don't need as much irrigation. And we include the, the soil moisture that's held at the, at the start of the season. And we end up with something that should be relatively close to your irrigation requirements. Uh, note, we have things like runoff and drainage. Um, we also have a, a, a thing we call irrigation efficiency, which sort of um, accounts for the, for the leaks and the other, other water loss or the um, uh, a lack of a, a, uh, a lack of an even irrigation distribution across a block, um, and we call that a, our irrigation efficiency factor. And once again, we we include that as part of our our water budgeting tool. Okay, so I'm just going to pause here for a second and, and hand back to to Michael. Um, we have a I suppose I suppose a question that I want to to ask. We, we, we're curious about is that how many of you in the audience are currently using this sort of scheme for 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 your irrigation budgeting? Um, there should be a, a poll will come up on your screen and you're able to select either uh, yes or no um, if you're currently using a, a, a water budgeting or an irrigation budgeting tool. Yeah, thanks for that, Paul. That poll's just been released. So, um, yeah, if everyone could please um, take a look at that and we will release um, the results of that poll at the end of the session. Um, while we're on a quick break here, I'd also just like to preempt probably some questions that are kind of come through around how to access the tool. Um, there will be some information that will be distributed after the webinar about how you can access the tool. But for those that can't wait, um, we're inviting people to contact the AWRI's help desk um, team and the tool will be distributed on request. But as I said, some further information will be released after the webinar. Paul, I'll hand it back over to you. Um, I will probably recap on this when we get to the end of the, the presentation, but also to emphasize we, we are interested in um, feedback on the on the tool that we've developed. And so um, I suppose one of the, the conditions with providing it to you will be that we, we are likely to be back in touch um, sometime during the irrigation season to, to, to ask you, you know, how you're finding it and how, how we can make it better, um, better tailor it to your needs. Okay, so irrigation budgeting tools um, aren't a, a new thing. They've been around for you know, 20, or, 20 or 30 years. There's quite a range of different tools available with different levels of sophistication. Um, some tools um, focus on water applied from, from irrigation and don't, have a, don't take a lot of an account into, into rainfall. Um, they're quite well matched for um, some of the, the inland irrigated regions. Um, some tools allow you to track your irrigation during the season. So they've got places where you can enter readings from, from water meters. Um, some have a more detailed scheduling component. So um, they're as much a, a budgeting tool as a, a, a more integrated scheduling um, or irrigation scheduling method. Um, and some are broader than just vineyards, so they talk about other um, other irrigation methods. So you know, overhead overhead sprinklers, or um, even furrow irrigation on some of the some of the other tools, and for other other irrigated crops, so um, citrus and almonds, etc. Um, or or even broad acre crops. Um, you know, if you're growing lucerne, or yeah, there's a there's a range of different tools. The um, I suppose the focus for the the tool that that we're talking about here that we've um, that we're, we're just releasing, it includes um, evapotranspiration from all Australian geographic in indicators, so it should be a applicable across a, a range of Australian wine regions. Um, it allows rainfall to be included in the budget. Um, you know, a, as many of our regions um, don't rely solely on irrigation, they have a quite a large component of um, of rainfall, and and it's targeted at at drip irrigation. Um, of grapevines only. Um, but in saying that, if you have uh, an existing tool that you're using, the, the principles that I'm going to run through today when I'm describing how, how the tool we've just released works will apply equally to you. And I wouldn't say that, you know, I could you know, that, that one tool is going to be much better, better than the other. If you've got something you're familiar with and it's working for you, I would um, recommend that you stick with it. Okay, so here's a screenshot of the um, irrigation budgeting tool. Um, it, it is an Excel based tool. Um, and as an example, we have, uh, or I've entered in the, um, the AWRI's uh, vineyard, um, complete with blocks named after all our favourite IDS, industry development and support staff members. So see Michael, you've got a, a block of Cabernet Sauvignon um, down there on the, on the left too. 
um, for start, you um, you set up a, a vineyard, um, sort of the I suppose the high level as you 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 know you're, you're entering the, the the parameters that that drive the drive the tool or some of the, the factors that drive the tool, um, especially around the the, uh, the the weather data and 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 some of the soil information. So most of those fields are, are fairly self-explanatory. Um, you talk about the the season, um, the amount of water that you've got available for irrigation. Um, there's a, a potential if you want to um, come and, or say you would purchase some more water during the, the season, or if you have a, a large rainfall of event during the season and there's some additional water flows into your dam, um, you, can, you can add that. Um, you have a, a thing for your normal irrigation use, so you can sort of just do a little bit of a benchmarking. It, is the amount of water I have, does it add up to what I would normally expect to use? Uh, you have your location. Um, so this is important because this drives the evapotranspiration data that is uh, in the background of the tool. Um, and it also drives sort of, we have nominated whether you have the, are in that um, supplementary or fully irrigated region, but if we see a little bit later on, we can, um, we can, we can override that uh, if we want to. And it asks you some, or it asks about your irrigation efficiency. Um, so remember I talked about that sort of the, the drainage and the, um, uh, you know, leaks and other things as part of your irrigation system, maybe potentially some runoff. Um, nominally, 90% is about as good as you get for this. Um, and often it's more like 85 or, or, or 80%. So it says that, you know, we, we do lose some water. And in a lot of our systems, we need to lose some water, especially, and, and probably lose isn't the right term. We need to use some water, um, especially for, for leaching. Um, if otherwise, we will end up with a, a buildup of, of salt in our soil profile, and that can have negative effects on, on vine production and productivity. Um, as an opportunity to enter your soil type, and the depth um, that you think the, the vine roots go to. So basically this is you know, how much, or it help, allows us to estimate how much water can be stored in your, um, in the soils in your vineyard. Uh, this is a fairly rough calculation here, just based on soil type and it only lets you have one, one soil type, not if you have a, a, a range of soils in your profile. There is in the, um, in the block selection tool, you can put a, a much more accurate sort of estimate of readily available water if you, if you have that. And I'll go into a few more details there. Just looking at that, probably my, my estimated 40 millimetres um, might be a little, bit, a little bit light based on those, um, those figures that are there. Um, while we're here, um, as far as sort of the instructions or the, 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 the um, indication of what you need to do, what would, you would enter into each of these boxes, um, there are um, helpful little uh, like hover boxes or comment boxes that are appended to each of the titles that give a description of what needs to go in those, in those sections. So if you ever get stuck while you're using this tool, you basically just hover your mouse over the little, the little red triangle there and you will get a description of what you're um, what, what's, what we're after, what we're wanting in that box, or what that, what that means. Okay, so I talked briefly about um, readily available water. Um, this is just a, a slide to de describe the process of what you go through to, to calculate that. So you'd have a, um, soil profiles that are a range of different depths. Um, you have the different um, soil types within those profiles, and then you can you can multiply those out to say, okay, this is how much water I have available. Um, most vineyards or many vineyards will have completed a, um, a soil survey um, prior to establishment or part of as part of a, an irrigation upgrade or redevelopment. Um, and so often you can go and, you, and you'll have on file somewhere that sort of information, but it is quite useful, you know, if you're having trouble with um, calculating these figures, I'd encourage you to get in touch with the, the AWRI help desk or possibly a local consultant to, to work through, you know, what, what the, um, the, the water holding capacity of your, your soil is likely to be. Okay, so we've talked about setting up the whole vineyard. Now we set up the, the individual blocks. Um, we click on the edit block section. Um, we have an example of a couple different blocks here. We've got uh, Marcel Shiraz, um, obviously a red variety. Um, we've got that um, readily available water or maximum readily available water figure that I, I talked about previously. And we've got about whether it's grown as a, um, a fully irrigated or a, a supplementary irrigated system. We have the area, 
and we've got the the yield that we're we're targeting. Um, so I'll just work through those sort of steps, um, those last three steps or four steps one at a time. Um, generally, we um, we expect that our red varieties will yield a little bit less than our white varieties. Um, I suppose it's a, a fairly broad generalisation. But with that, we expect the white varieties will also use a little bit more water than the red varieties. Um, so by denoting red or white, um, we, we basically change that KC a little bit to, um, to, to, to account for the, the different water uses or different expected water uses between the varieties. Now, if you have a, um, a red variety that you think you're managing more like a, a white variety, um, I don't know, a, um, a Sangiovese or something like that, that might be particularly, um, uh, sensitive to, to water stress, and you want want to want to, to, to keep it keep it well watered and, and manage it more. As you, as I said, for a red, then you could you could choose to still denote that as a as a, as a white if you like. Um, once again, I talked about the the difference between the supplementary and the fill irrigation systems. Um, in the Barossa, we would default to a supplementary system, but if you want to select a fill system, uh, once again, you're tar targeting a, a, a higher yield and a larger canopy, you can change that to a fill system, uh, no trouble at all. Um, we've got the area, and then we've got the target yield. At the moment, this is set to 100%. To um, once again, if you want, or you think your yield would be less or you're willing to I suppose sacrifice some yield to uh, reduce your irrigation requirements and you can you can change that but I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next slide okay so this is a hypothetical yield response to water um, you know we have a, a low yield and by number one when um, where you don't apply any irrigation, um, exactly how low that is is probably driven a little bit by your production system, but also by the amount of rainfall that you you receive. Um, a low yield without irrigation will be um, quite a bit higher if you have a lot of rain than than vice versa. Um, number two, the yield increases as you you, you apply more more water, um, and you get to a point where you sort of hit a hit a hit a plateau or a maximum at number three, where um, there's no further increase as you put the increase your irrigation volume, and you can get to a point if you put too much too much water on uh, where you actually start to have a, a negative effect on, on productivity. Um, we've got that target range there so um, yeah, a lot of growers are aiming to, to maximize their yield and they'll put on as, as much water as we, we need to do that but there are you know, other growers that will say look I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice some yield because I see that that water stress as being beneficial for, for fruit quality and it helps me me hit my my grade targets or the wine style that I need to um, for, for the product that I'm looking to produce. Um, once again with that, so if we go back to the previous slide where we had those sort of percentages where you could say oh, I'm targeting a different proportion, different proportions of yield, um, you can use that to, to gauge where your, your yield sits next to probably what the, you know, what the potential or what the expected yield would be for, a, for, um, for, for your region. Okay, so if we break down now some of the, the more finer details of the irrigation budgeting tool, um, we're back on the on the main screen here in the in the AWRI Barossa Vineyard. Um, we said nominally that we had um, 15 megalitres of water available, um, and at the moment we've got quite a, a dry season. So if we look at the the rainfall across here is is all below the the LTA or generally it's below the LTA and this would mean that the um, you you effectively have less water than we would calculate what you than what we would calculate that you need to to irrigate the vineyard for the year. So we can look back and say you know how do we manage that? What sort of um, what what sort of changes to your to your system would you make to 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 try and to try and manage that? Um, one way we can do that is to look at what our our production targets are um, to see uh, where you know where where we sit relative to the region. What we we might choose to to do with our management. So um, in the in the main screen you can can drop those production targets back. So by dropping the, um, the, the three red blocks back from 100% to 90%, so a, a small yield penalty, and dropping the Chardonnay block 
back from 100% to 75%, um, we were able to realise a you know a, a nominal nine megalitre saving or reduction in what our expected water uses. Now, I I suppose this is a little hard because you know we rely on these numbers being realistic and sensible for your for your vineyard to start with, and you may need to sort of tailor some of the um, some of the inputs to to get that. Uh, also, the Chardonnay block, um, because it was being managed as a, a fully irrigated system targeting a high yield, um, initially it used a lot more water. And I mean, we can still see that, you know, we're seeing eight, eight and a half megs off a three hectare block compared to um, four, four megs off three hectare block for the, for the Shiraz block. Uh, but um, so by applying that, you know, we had a lot more that we could save there, I suppose. Okay, so our previous example was a, a dry season. Um, I've changed the expected rainfall to match the long-term average now. I mean, this is unlikely we're gonna get perfectly average rainfall, um, but it does sort of serve to show that you know, if we have, have the normal rainfall, then based on the, um, the equations as part of the budgeting tool, um, we can see that we're, instead of being um, 10 or 11 megalitres short in that unallocated block box, we're now um, closer to about four megalitres short. Um, so you have a, an estimate of rainfall that you're using, um, that you've entered during the season, maybe you've come to or um, gone to one of the AWRI webinars put on by one of the presenters from BOM that talk about the, the medium to long term um, rainfall outlook and you use that to, to tailor what your expected rainfall is. Um, as the season progresses, you can enter actual rainfall figures as well. Um, so that's what I've done in this example. We've had a generally a, a drier than average start to the season and then in, in December we've had a, a, a rather large rainfall event and we can see that for some of our blocks, you know, we're expecting to put water on in November, but if we go back and compare to the, oops, to the previous one when we had no um, no rainfall in in um, December, we were expecting to apply quite a lot of water. But as a result of that 75 mil rainfall, then we're expecting to apply quite a lot less water, and, and in fact no water to some of those blocks. And with our um, the soils information you've entered, we can actually carry some of that rainfall um, over, or that water is stored over into into January, so it can also reduce the amount of water that's uh, irrigation that's required in January. Okay, so we're getting towards the um, the end of the presentation now. I'm um, just a last sort of minor point. Um, Normally when we're talking about irrigation, we're talking about applying in, in megalitres per hectare because our, our dams are surveyed in megalitres or our water entitlements come in megalitres. However, when we're talking about rainfall, um, as you know, that's all in, in millimetres. Um, the numbers are the, um, yeah, they're, they're measuring the same thing. It's just different units. Um, we've set the, the spreadsheet up so you can switch back and forth between units. So um, over on the um, left-hand side here, you've got megalitres, um, megalitres per hectare is highlighted in blue, so that's what we're displaying down the bottom, um, but we can change that to, to millimetres, so that's now equivalent to the, um, to the rainfall figures. Um, just ba basically just to make the, the interpretation and the comparison between those figures more easy. So, um, in conclusion, um, as you're probably very well aware, the irrigation requirements vary with your environment and management practices, especially the um, canopy size and, and the yields that you're targeting. We, the tool we've developed, we're able to predict and, and manage your irrigation needs. Um, but this is at a, a high level, this is a, a more of a strategic tool. It's, it's not designed as a, as a scheduling tool. Um, it allows you to do some scenario planning and pri prioritise blocks and, and production targets um, across, your, across your vineyard. Um, and I suppose the, um, the budgeting tool, um, you will receive a, an email as Michael described near the, the start of the seminar um, for, for feedback and as part of that email you'll be able to um, sort of in, inquire or ask if you'd like a, a, a copy of the budgeting tool. We are very interested in getting your, your feedback on, on the tool and how we can improve it. Um, our aim is eventually to, to move it to a, to a web-based platform um, and your feedback will help us uh, to do that, to, to choose exactly how we target to make that work. 
Okay, so thank you very much. Um, we're now ready for some questions. Yes, thanks very much, Paul. Um, before we jump into the Q&A, the audience should have noticed by now that I've released the poll results associated with the, um, the question we released earlier in the webinar. Yeah. Um, looks like about two thirds of the audience aren't currently using a, a water budgeting tool, Paul, which I think was a little bit. Yeah. That, that, that's actually better than I expected, to be honest. Um, I, we don't have, um, I suppose, good figures from the industry about who are using these sort of methods to, to estimate their, their irrigation requirements. Um, but to, um, if it is, um, yep, yeah, really a third of the, a third of the participants in the, in the webinar that are using a budgeting tool, I think that, that is good news. Yep, great. Okay, we'll jump from here into the questions, Paul. Yes. So we've had a few come in already. For anyone that would like to ask a question, just a reminder, just open up that Q&A part of the toolbar and type your question in and send it through. Um, the first one is around whether New Zealand sites will be able to use the tool. Uh, so, um, yeah. <laughs> The tool's been um, um, paid for and, and developed by Australian um, grape growers and uh, winemakers. Um, so it is unlikely that we will be including information from New Zealand sites as, as part of the, the tool. Um, I would direct that inquiry to the Brigato Institute in New Zealand as part of their um, extension effort. They may be able to, to develop something similar or, or we may be able to work with them to tailor the the, the tool to New Zealand conditions, but we don't have any plans to do that at the moment. Thanks, Paul. Um, we've still got a question here about the block setup section of the tool and specifically the target yield. Um, can you please describe how that is set up? Is yeah. that some data that is input by the user or is that a default yeah. set of data? Okay, so we default to um, a 100% target yield. Now the target yield is a, um, a, it's a, it's a, it's a notional comment concept because the yield's going to vary between seasons anyway. Um, what I would say is it's the, the, the yield that you're expecting to produce or you, you, you want to ex produce from your, your block, you know, maybe your, your long-term average yield. If you've traditionally um, applied a, um, yeah, say a healthy, if you've applied, you know, your vines are well irrigated or adequately irrigated. Um, what the, the, the concept there is that if, you know, what sort of yield um, sacrifice would we make if we reduce the amount of irrigation? We don't have a really good irrigation response function or a good water response function for grapevines. Um, that's there's probably a couple of reasons for that. One is because it's a perennial crop, so it's not just the irrigation in that immediate season, but the season before that can also drive what the yield is. And Two, um, there are a lot of other environmental factors that influence the, the yield of, of vines. You know, the, the weather during inflorescence initiation and the weather um, during flowering can also um, have, a, have a big impact. Okay, thanks for that, Paul. Um, how does the expected and actual rainfall get entered into okay. this tool? So we provide the long-term average rainfall as, as figures for, the, for, for your reference. Um, and we expect you to select the expected and actual rainfall. So the actual rainfall you would take from a, um, a, a weather station that you have on the vineyard or the closest bomb station. Um, the expected rainfall, once again, it's part of that sort of scenario planning process. So if you have been to a, um, you know, you look at the long-term outlook from bomb or the medium-term outlook from bomb, you can enter the, um, the the rainfall based on that. So the long term the long term average gives you something to refer to, and then you can say, okay, Bomb is saying that we're you know, we're likely to make thirty percent of the long term average or sixty percent of the long term average. You can do that sort of discount and enter those figures in as a as an estimate. But once again, it's a it is a scenario planning tool. So we you know, we um, yeah, I'd, I'd be a lot richer than I am now if I could could predict exactly what the rain's going to be for the season. Be nice. Um, another question here about whether there have been any thoughts with regard to adding a section in the tool that shows theoretical soil water mm, MM 
and percentage versus full based on starting RAW value and adjusted through season for ET losses and rain and irrigation inputs. Okay. So maybe I didn't explain that quite as well as I could have, or I probably didn't explain that quite as well as I could have. Um, my impression of that question is that we actually, we have that in the, in the tool. So we, you, you start with a, um, a, uh, how do I describe it? You start, we have a, have a figure for what the, um, what the the maximum raw is, so the maximum water that your your profile can hold. We have another figure for what we think the water is at the start of the season. So basically, a a, a kickoff figure for from from bud burst, and then we run a um, what we call you, you call a, um, a a bucket model. So effectively, the the vine uses the water, and the bucket goes down. Um, we add water through through rainfall or irrigation, and the, or add, no, sorry, just for through rainfall, the bucket goes up. Um, once we hit that maximum our raw figure, so that's the maximum readily available water, um, the bucket overflows, and you can't hold any more water in the soil than that that figure so i i think that covers what what you're asking there but if you're happy to um you know i say we're, we're interested in feedback and if you'd like to contact us directly we can we can talk through that a little bit more okay thanks for that paul i've just got a question about um water use with cover crops yep. and whether the tool can accommodate Okay, so that's a that's a really good question. Um, at the moment, the the tool does not cover um, water use by cover crops during winter time or into spring. Um, and this is a, a large and, and you know growing component of um, irrigation or the the water budget for for a vineyard. Um, there would be potential to to build that into the tool. Um, at the moment, well, I suppose I haven't haven't seen any tools that that use that, but conceptually it. <coughs> Sorry, conceptually, if you know the um, the proportion of the the vineyard floor that has the, the cover crop growing there, and sort of how tall the cover crop is, we could we could provide an estimate of how much how much water that cover crop is likely to be using during during winter and spring. Okay, i um, got a question here from a student with respect to the crop coefficient is one coefficient generally used for the season or should one consider a varying coefficient taking into account that the need of water actually varies within a growing season? Yeah. So certainly the crop coefficient varies during the growing season. Um, there was a graph on, on one of my slides that had um, months across the bottom and then the crop coefficient value up the side. So we, when I was talking about the um, supplementary and fill irrigation, and that gives an indication of how much the, or the, the variation in the crop coefficients across the season. So um, generally during, um, during winter, the crop coefficient is, is, is very low, um, below one, but during the, the growing season when the canopy is, is fill, in a fully irrigated system with a large canopy, we might have a crop coefficient that's up to seven, uh, sorry, 0.7. Thanks, Paul. Also got a question about whether there are any costs associated with, I presume, the user um, okay. in using the tool? Um, so no, there are no costs. The tool is funded through um, the Australian Wine Research Institute and paid in part by um, levies, um, paid by grow grape growers and winemakers and also matching funds from the federal government. Um, a question here in about soil types. Um, specifically, I have a duplex soil with 25 centimetres of sand with gravel, then a short interface layer of gravel, then bottomless yellow clay, which was ripped prior to planting 20 years ago. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that is, um, we can, I suppose, when we're developing these tools, it's very, it's very difficult to find the appropriate layer of complexity. Um, we had quite some discussions about exactly how much detail we put in around defining your um, your soil type and the readily available water that that goes with your soil type. Um, you obviously have um, some some reasonable your your, um, your soil has been reasonably well quantified. Um, you can find tables that will convert the um, the depth and then the soil type to the the readily available water and how much water that it will hold. Um, 
if you have trouble with these calculations, I would encourage you to get in touch with the help desk at the AWRI because they should be able to 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 work through that with you. Um, and doing a doing a good job of this sort of um, un, underwrites the, the accuracy and the the utility of the irrigation budgeting tool. <coughs> okay, Paul. I think we've gone through all questions at this stage. Um, did you have any final comments that you'd like to make before we start to wrap this up? Uh, I'd just like to to thank everyone for for listening and for the for the questions that we've had. I, um, I thought that was all quite good. Thank you. Great, thanks, Paul. And just to re reiterate, some information about exactly how you can access this tool will be distributed in a follow up email after this session. It'll likely go out tomorrow, um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, there are no costs associated with using the tool, but we may contact you at a later stage to provide some feedback. Um, so I'd like to just end with thanking Paul for coming in and providing some insights around um, this new tool. Um, I'd also like to thank the audience who joined in today's session. Paul, can you skip through to the final slide for me, please? Um, for attendees, that's that's all right, we seem to have lost um, the screen sharing, that's all right. Um, for attendees, you will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording of this session. Um, acknowledgements go out to Wine Australia for providing funding and support for webinars by the AWRI Extension Project. Uh, looks like Paul's brought up that final slide, thanks for that. Um, the next AWRI, AWRI webinar is scheduled for the 17th of September. Tony Badaline from Australian Grape and Wine takes a timely look at the impacts of the COVID global pandemic on wine export markets. I believe there will be some um, information about China's anti-dumping investigation also. So um, yeah, if you're interested in attending that session, um, please visit the AWRI website to register. Thank you again for um, logging in today and I look forward to seeing you at the next AWRI webinar.